got me good In a hope that I just can't defuse But I know all oh, 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 the tricks up your sleeve Cause you, you and I Used to sing just to pass by the time And I can't let go oh, oh, oh. Without a partial thought to where a song may flow Some ring away but the echo of yours seem to stay And lately when I listen close what I hear may be fake See you be real now And I'll be honest That what we've got here Truly harmonics And I can search, search, search Just to hear the same sound play But why would I when you're standing here Right in front of me Truly harmonics Oh, you've got me good It's a concept I just can't refuse But you had to see through What seems without flaw Say that the sense of more vows wrong away Maybe it's true So when this sound leaves my ear I can't help but to sing it again Hope that if I sing it out Maybe you'll comprehend I've been around now And all is silent What we've got here Truly harmonics Episode, reality show, whatever you want to call it, of the Business Power Hour with reality show. Darren and the Music Man. Good, good evening, evening, everybody. Good evening, Darren, Jimmy. Good, good How evening. Are you? How are you? Good. What's going on? Oh, we. You know, it's been a fun week. It's cold it's, week. It's a cold week. Oh my God! It's Thirteen feels, degrees. Outside. I feel like yeah. Well, without yeah. the wind. I mean, we're complaining about thirteen degrees. What about those people? In the yeah, Midwest? but I'm here. I'm not there. I don't worry, uh, worry about yeah, that. You don't worry I'm about that. when it comes to that. So. so you know, you and I've been going back and forth for the last few days on on some different things that we want to do with the show, right? Well, not just the yeah. show. It's you know the artwork and the the, the artwork, the advertising, and, and we're, we're doing all kinds of logos. things to improve our presence for you, our viewers. And oh, what, by the way, thank you to a viewer. We keep on going thousands. I mean, thank you so much for tuning in yeah. each week, and, and and I guess some of you are spreading the word because uh, we're killing it, right, Jim? 
We you said what? We're the number one station on you your are. station. We are, we're the num yeah, we're number one show, number one station. Yeah, that's it. Way to go. See, there you go. So, so bad. We should have come here earlier. Yeah. I have a small hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the big I'm hand. I got a small hand. I the See, my hand is soon. small. Right. Yeah. I speak of the presence of you know. Number one show, you know, great producer. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we'll work on That's that. That's all it takes. <laughs> yeah, but we but, we, we want to introduce the audience. We're going to ask for your help. Yeah, we need you your help. Because we're, we're, we're having a fight. We're having a disagreement. I wouldn't yeah, say it's a argument, fight. It's a disagreement. A, a dispute. I'm right, he's wrong. And, and that's just the way it works. So what we're trying to do is come up with a tagline for the show. So Because we got something special that's going to be on our uh Artwork, our artwork is going to be special. Well, we got we got a whole bunch of, of things that we're working on, but we need your help because we can't agree on what the tagline should be. So and you're going to make the decision. We're going to show you two different options here. All Before right. Before you show, but I'm them, not going to tell you whose is who. The call in number to give us your the answer to, to your let opinion. Let us know is six three one four one five thirteen sixty five six three one four one five thirteen sixty five to give us your answer on what you like. Okay, so here, here are the taglines. We're gonna to, put to, to say something. If they don't get through, I would say to just write your response. Just write your chat. response as you're watching. Right. Chat. Exactly. And yeah. yes, John, it is colder with a bald head. But that's that's you know, it's my cousin asking me if it's colder with thinning hair. Yes, it is, John. Um, all right. So here's the first tagline. Plugging you into a world of new business opportunities. Before you decide. And before you read the second one, keep in mind that the show is called the Business Power Hour. Jeez, why don't you just give it away, <laughs> No, That's what do you what the show? The wow. I get it. I get it. Hour, and now, right, okay, plugging. Okay, okay so not Darren, mix it up. Let's so, mix so, it up now. Okay, it is mixed up. So Say the other one. I'm going to say it again. Plugging you into a world of new business opportunities is the first one, and the second one, and I think Jim's got graphics that he can pop up on those. Creating new business one story at a time. Okay. Okay. See, our guests, our them guests them actually like, again. I know which one our guests like. So it's plugging you into a new a oh sorry. Plugging you into a world of new business opportunities. Or possibilities. You didn't change you, that you, word. You didn't also. say that. It's just opportunities. <laughs> okay, well, no. By the way, you're not going to be <laughs> speaking at all tonight. This is just me, me and him. And the so. second one is creating new business one story at a time. That's very good. Too. Okay, that's very good. They're both very good. They're both good. They're both and one's better than the other, but exactly. we're going to see. We're going to see what so you know. Again, the phone number is six three one four one five thirteen sixty five. And if you can, if you decide that you don't like either one of them and you think you may have a better one for us and we choose the one that you suggest, we're going to pay you $50. 50 bucks? 50. Wow. Yeah, Jimmy's, wow. Jimmy's Wait, got that kind of say, money. Did you just say if people vote for yours, you're going to pay them $50? No, no I said if they was come a, up with their own. If they come up with their own and it's better if than... If they vote for mine, I'm going to give them 10 Okay. If, if, we, <laughs> if they come up with their own and we choose their tagline, we're going to pay them $50. Nice. Now, that's right. Cash. If we choose them. That's correct. Cash. This could be a money day for you guys driving all the way out here. Tagline, <laughs> 50 bucks. Did they drive right. or did they fly? I How did they, they get here? Well, they that's the thing. I'm very excited about our guest today. You would be excited because, about it. Well, we all know this is the last... No one talks to you. Last week in a month, what do we do? We do charities. And we and we talk to the, the, the people that actually bring things and bring happiness to other people and help other people. Exactly. This particular organization makes me very happy. And, and you know nostalgic. Why. And nostalgic at the same time. And I know I mean, why. It's so, history. It's, I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to back I'm out when I talk about That's this. I'm done. I'm finished but, overnight. you know, for, for those of you who don't know, Long Island has a very, very rich history in aviation. Uh, you know, you talk about... Grumman. Grumman. You talk about Fairchild, right, which mm -hmm. made the A-10 and the P-47, uh, you know, and, and a, lot of, a lot of other things that have happened on Long Island in aviation. Well, what we have tonight is people that are trying to preserve that history right here on Long Island. Didn't Lockheed have a, a plant out here too? Lockheed bought Grumman, didn't they? Yeah. Lockheed bought Grumman. Don't know. Uh, so, you know, they kind of came in and bought them and took them. But, you know, the two big ones were Fairchild and 
and, and, yeah, and Fairchild was at Republic Airport in Farmingdale. And I had some aunts and uncles that actually worked at that plant during My World War did. II. So Jim's grandfather worked there too. So it was a bit, very big employer. Uh, you know, I think they had almost 9,000 employees at one time uh, just on that field. So it was, it was a very big uh, operation over there. And we have some people from the Air Power Museum right there at Republic Airport that are preserving the history of the field there. So I want to welcome Jackie and Jeff, right? Thank you. From, thank from you the for Air coming Power. out here. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, we want to thank you for being on, and this is actually fantastic. I'm excited because I've been to the Air Power Museum a number of times, and I love walking around. and And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I was, uh, as as I told you before, I'm in the Civil Air Patrol. So for those of you who don't know, we're the auxiliary of the United States Air Force, and I had a cadet, and I was at the time the squadron commander for. We had a a, a squadron up in Northport at the VA hospital. And I had a cadet who had their uh, Sweet 16 at the Air Power Museum. Yes. This was like that. 10 years ago. Okay, maybe a little bit more. And we're walking around, and I had a gentleman that was in my squadron that was a retired uh, Air Force colonel who uh, was one of the original engineers on the A-10. He oh, wow. retired from the Air Force, and he came to work for Fairchild. And we're walking around the museum, and what was neat about that is he joined the Air Force in 1952. So as we were walking around the museum, he was like, that was the first, air, that was the first aircraft I flew. That's the first <laughs> jet I flew. And it was like he was pointing all these things out. And I'm sitting there going, wow. Because when we look at them, sometimes the you know younger people that show up, they look at them and go, oh, they're just old airplanes. They're not that cool. But you don't realize that they were the first. And they yeah. were cool. And, and they, they were cool. cool. And they're still cool. And, you know, when you somebody's telling you a story about, yeah, that was the first jet I flew, but we couldn't go over a certain speed because they were worried about the wings falling off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, why would you even get in that airplane? <laughs> but that's what they did because they just loved flying. How did you get into this? How, tell us from the beginning. Oh, it's a How long did story. This all get started? It's a family thing. My dad uh, was a kind of a barnstormer in the 30s, uh, working his way through college, uh, and uh, he won a crossword puzzle contest. Uh, he's out uh, outside of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He won a crossword puzzle, and uh, it was quite a bit of money at the time. It was during the Depression. And um, instead, well, I guess he paid his tuition, but in, in addition, uh, he bought a, a two-seat uh Biplane. Biplane, a cockpit, mm -hmm. open cockpit biplane, right. and would go around Lancaster County and, and where they had you know, a lot of f farmers' fields. And so he would fly around and uh, give rides. And um, that was when uh, you could pretty much land anywhere. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. 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 I mean, now, when, were you, still... when you were a child, did your family have the business back at that time? No, 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 no. Nothing to my family, nothing to do with this business. My okay. father ultimately became, after service in the uh, Army Air Forces as a flight surgeon and a rated pilot, combat pilot, um, became a physician. And... Um, Actually uh, a fertility expert. Uh, not really? Yeah. Uh, okay. One of the first. It, yeah, he was in, always interested in that. And, um, uh, and my mother's brother was a fighter pilot in, and flew Republic P-47s okay. in Europe. Uh, for a number of years in World War II mm -hmm. uh, from the Normandy invasion. So, so you have a real connection and, to what's going on uh, here. My older son, uh, I became a pilot uh, when I was relatively young, mm -hmm. and um, my older son uh, uh, flies an F-6. He's currently in the Air Force uh, flying F-16. Well, tell your son, thank you for a he's been doing <laughs> that. He's been doing that for 22 years, at okay. least. 23 years. 22. 22 years. Yeah. So, um, it, the, and Jackie can tell you about her experiences with the Air Force. Well, so there's... A, and a, and airplanes. Right, totally separate experience. I, I grew up as an Air Force brat, although okay. my father was not military at the time. So I grew up in Europe around planes and airplanes and pilots and mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. And uh, thought after I graduated from high school, I would never have anything to do with planes again. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then, it's one of those things where you were, you were so involved in it, you were like, you know what, enough. No, it was, it was just, you know, went on to college and 
you know, thought that was it and mm -hmm. met Jeffrey and um, that became history. And, uh, you know, we, we both uh, got involved not only in, in airplanes, but in our private business, which is making uh, flight apparel for, mm -hmm. for the government and for commercial use, which then segued into our love for airplanes, especially Jeffrey's passion with uh, World War II and the history and the and, people involved. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you think about that way back in that time, uh, you know, World War II, you, you think, you know, we don't think it's that far away because it wasn't really that far away for us. Uh, but you look at the younger generation and it's, you know, it's 80 years. You they know, have a hard time. Years. Yeah. They have a really hard time. I mean, they'll come up to Jeff uh, and say, um, were you in World War II? You know, they had yeah. no concept whether World War II was before or after Vietnam or, mm -hmm. you know, what the sequence is. So yeah. um, I'm maybe getting ahead of myself, but that's what the museum um, tries to do is to educate you know, current generations and future generations. And that's what they need because they don't realize, unfortunately, our younger generations now, they don't know what life is like without this stuff, without Correct. the instant connection of information and news and all that stuff that they get at an instant. You know, when we were kids growing up, you know, I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, you, you didn't get information right away. Right. You know. Well, I think the American Air Power Museum does something which is incredible um, because the, the kids from three on up get mm. to get into real cockpits. Right. And, That's and they I love, love it. They, yeah. they make believe they're flying. And mm -hmm. it's not the, the computer. And it's not, you know, immediate gratification, so to speak. Right. So they're going back into time. When right. For, for those of you who don't know about the Air Power Museum, I'm just going to give you, say some facts about the museum and that, and you guys can correct me if I'm. Well, first I'm of all, it's the American Air Power Museum. The, the American Air Power Sorry. Museum. My fault. My <laughs> apologies. Uh, you know, it's located on on the uh, east side of the field at Republic. Okay. Right. East side. Yeah. Twelve thirty yeah. New Highway. Yeah. Two twelve thirty New Highway. Uh, it's open from Thursday through Sunday. Sunday. Okay, 1030 to 4 during a day. Uh, you can go in and you can actually walk around and touch the aircraft and look at the aircraft and climb up and look at the inside the cockpits of, of the different aircraft that you have there. You have aircraft from almost every generation, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you know, military, uh, you know, Navy. It doesn't matter of the service because I know you have Navy, you have Air Force, you have Army Air Corps uh, equipment there. And you actually have something pretty neat that you guys do, is you have an operating C forty seven, right? All right, which I can tell you this: What's there, the C forty seven. I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> that C forty seven. There have been times that I've been waiting to take off at Farmingdale, and because they have to do a low pass because they're practicing for a show, I have to wait. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and you know, getting out of Farmingdale is very difficult. Is sometimes oh, okay. very difficult. Again. So let's let's let Jeff tell us all about the C forty seven and the program that goes on there with that. So, so oh, uh, it's integral with the the mission of the museum mm -hmm. is uh, we're a living history museum. We're chartered by not only are we a nonprofit uh, organization. We're chartered by the state of New York, the regents of the state of New York, as an educational institution. And so what we uh, strive to communicate uh, by uh, conducting or having living history experiences is the experience of the people that participated in different events at different times during the World War I, World War II, uh, the, Korea, the sea, right? well, Korea, Vietnam, uh, areas where the current public school curriculums, or the general generally, um, don't really delve into much anymore. Um, they're the, they it's glossed over only in terms of you know there's a paragraph about one or another as opposed to you know, 30 to 40 years ago or what, however many years ago when the programs were different. And, and again, like you were, what, like you were saying, the, if you look at 1945, that's a long time ago, 1941, 
it's what 80 however many years ago right. uh and so it's like talking about the Revolutionary War or the Battle of Gettysburg or yeah. something. I mean, so what we're trying to do is bring this human experience and the human part of the experience of the people that were in this, lived in this period, worked in this period, served in this period, and contributed to what we all take for granted today. You wouldn't have the iPhone if you didn't have a C-47 dropping paratroopers over Normandy mm -hmm. the night of... June 6, 19, uh, 1944. Um, the C-47 is a twin-engine transport aircraft that was the most common transport aircraft used. It was the first, uh, actually, it was the first transcontinental, or one of the first transcontinental, fully enclosed, um, all-metal uh, transport planes. It started service in 1935, approximately, mm -hmm. with um, American Airlines and Eastern Airlines um, and uh, taking people from New York to Florida, taking people from New York to California, stopping every, I don't know, 300 miles or so or 400 miles. And so you'd make a number of stops. That was the civilian version. Right. And during World War II, or at the beginning of World War II, these aircraft were the backbone of... Uh, the civil air transportation system as a as a piece of equipment um, just as a 737 or a 757 or a 787 with the thing the jets we take for right. granted today so our c-47 was particularly unique in that it was uh, originally a dc-3 mm -hmm. that was on the douglas uh, production line in california uh, in early 1942, and um, immediately all of the civilian aircraft that were on production lines that were adaptable or in use by the military were converted to military use. So it got not only a standard category uh, serial number as a transport, right. but it got an Army Air Force serial number and was matriculated into the Army Air Forces as a... Um, uh, as an aircraft uh, configured to drop uh, paratroopers. It, now, it, it started its life as that, not a transport, not a cargo aircraft, right, never yes. a cargo aircraft. And the uniqueness of it was that it served during World War II. It served uh, in um, France, uh, it mm -hmm. served in Holland, it dropped paratroopers. How many soldiers would it carry? 18. The stick, full stick of paratroopers was 18. And now um, we use it for the C-47, well, what we it, call the C-47 so, D-Day flight. It's yeah, right. So we you have get, a living history experience mm -hmm. um, where uh, <clears throat> we will offer uh, today's civilians to participate as if they were going back into history right. and uh, becoming paratroopers. On, more on so ba basically what they can do, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is they they actually get to get dressed up like the paratroopers. Right. We right. outfit them with uh, the steel pot helmet, mm -hmm. the field jacket, uh, a a partial para parachute harness, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some are, if they're lucky enough they get a dummy Tommy gun or something right. to to hold on to. Uh, along with a crew of um, reenactors, the reenactors mm -hmm. who are uh, gentlemen who are steeped in this history and are fully outfitted in the exact uh, clothing and and conduct a briefing. The 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 uh, past the, the people that participate in this experience will be brought into one of our briefing rooms, which mm -hmm. we have in the museum. Yeah, I was going to say, in the museum itself, you have briefing rooms that were set up right. just as they're, if you were there. They're replica. Right? They're, it's a replica of mm -hmm. a 1944 briefing room. Uh, they get the full briefing. Um, they pull a curtain up, uh, across the... Uh, away from a board, right. you know, it's not secret anymore. And mm -hmm. then they tell you, well, you are, we're going here. This is our drop zone. This is where you're going to be. Uh, the enemy is going to be here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then uh, the uh, reenactors, with the reenactors uh, get in column of twos, right. uh, march the participants out. Now we only take about eight to maximum ten 
uh, part, participants, participants on a, board because we have uh, we have the reenactors yeah. on board, mm -hmm. and then we have our flight uh, engineer. We have our flight engineer and jump master. So we have right. a, our own crew members on board as well as the pilot and co-pilot of the aircraft. And, and they reenact the whole sequence of events that they would that they in would the aircraft. In the aircraft, they get a, they get they continue. They don't, to they hear. don't actually jump. Let, no, let's they, be clear. they continue they don't to actually, hear about the, the mission. Actually, take off. Yes. yes. Oh, course. yes. Yeah. So, so, so the plane uh, takes off, it taxis out and takes off, uh, goes out over the water a little bit, uh, over the ocean to the south shore, comes back in as if they're coming in over the Normandy beaches. And there's not much difference between looking at the south shore Atlantic coast. Which, which is when the people like me have to wait because they got to do a little <laughs> pass over the field. <laughs> And then and, they actually hook up. And we have a they, static oh, line. Oh, do they hook them up? They yeah. hook them up. So we have a static line, which is the runs the length of the, the aircraft, and uh, paratroopers have a, 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 I'll call it a lanyard, that hooks up mm -hmm. to the static line. And uh, the door is open, and um, they don't, people do not jump. Right. Um, do they get pushed? <laughs> they actually feel the the pull. Well, there, well, there is. It, it's a lot of fun. At, we'll we'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, well, that. Uh, yeah. At, well, what it, what it comes down at to at the is, end of the experience when they get off the aircraft, the um, the the static line uh, attachment is pulled and it actually pops a simulated chute. Huh. So they get to feel what it would have felt like the of the opening right. of the sh of the opening of the chute not they don't right. get the the feel of the drop but they get the feel of that opening of the chute and then they so walk down course. Uh, 375 375 per person and the actual which barely barely covers the cost but it's really a wonderful experience well, well, people don't realize how much fuel these things right. use right There's, but it's a great gift yeah. and our other flight experiences which can take place in the in the T six mm -hmm. or well, the Waco. Sub subsidize yourselves. We um, you, tried you get some grants, I'm sure. Yes, some. Um, um, do you actually, do one of them. Fundraising. Do you still hold events? We there? hold a lot of events, but not really fundraising events. Actually, the hangar is used very often for movie shoots, or the planes are used for movie Why shoots. Why don't you do which, some sort of events there? We're trying just... to get the funding to do that. It's like you know, a chicken and an egg type of thing. So we need to get funding and to build up to doing those so, kinds so of things. So you talked about movie shoots. So I got a quick question for you. Uh, you know that, that show now that's on Manifest, okay? All right, that's, I, they've I been shooting at Farmingdale. Right. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because we- They Durst, shot it. They, they shot at our hangar once. They shot in another hangar yeah. adjacent to us once. It's about some some plane that goes off and comes back five years later. Or yeah, something. It's a, they're flying back. It's, they fly through the storm. And it's a sci-fi thing. It, yeah, it's like five yeah, and a half years fun. later or something like that. But it, you know, they say they went. They say they diverted to Stewart, but when they get off, they're at Farmingdale, and they actually have a couple of scenes with the pilot, you know, coming back to the field, and you can actually see the old tower, and they're that, using that building. Yeah. yeah, we had the old tower outfitted like a 1940s uh, tower. Mm -hmm. Um, and we stopped using it um, for a couple of years because of some uh, security measures of going up the stairs in, in right. the uh, old tower. But it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's yeah, what kind of events fun. do you hold? Well, we have uh, the Memorial Day weekend air show, which is in conjunction with uh, Jones Beach. Yep. Um, we'll do we'll bring in special aircraft. Uh, for which we always look for funding, of course. And we do the same thing over Labor Day. And now we're working uh, very closely with the group of reenactors that do the D-Day flight experience. And because it's the 75th anniversary, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing events probably almost every month surrounding the C-47 and oh, have excellent. it flying more often. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's an amazing aircraft to see it flying. You know, and yeah. just so you know, twin engine means it has two. Okay. <laughs> that's that's fifty gallons an hour per engine gallons, of gasoline. Yeah. Of ga yeah, right. Aviation gasoline. gasoline. That's six dollars and seventy five cents a gallon. Yeah. People don't get that. No, know. they don't. So, you know, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll get calls. Um, uh, does the twelve dollar admission um, give you a chance to fly in the airplane? 
Yeah, no, oh, really? yeah, no, the $12 mission is like, no, it's going to let you walk around the museum yeah. and actually see some of the cool aircraft that you have. There. And you have a lot of cool aircraft from different different uh, eras and things like yeah. that. Like, I know, we, I know you have an F-111, right? Well, we have uh, what an aircraft called an F-111, which was the one of the first um, low-level tactical aircraft that used terrain-avoiding radar, which meant right. that it could fly what they called nap of the earth, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, over treetops at yeah. uh, 300 knots. Well, actually, I, they they hit supersonic speeds. I, I yeah, I have a, a friend of mine that was actually uh, a pilot of an F-111 right. in the Air Force. They had, and the, he says, yeah. yeah, they used to do treetop stuff. All yeah, the time. they started oh, using them in. Uh, they started they testing it or started using them in 1967, 68 mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Uh, lost a number of them because the terrain following radar was not. Uh, perfected. Right. Um, the Navy managed to perfect their version in an aircraft called an A6 Intruder, one right. of which we have on our ramp, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, there was a movie made called Flight of the Intruder and a book, right. and uh, it, it was a Navy strike bomber that was used extensively. But that's extensively. part of the static. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we and, have and, some, and some static airplanes yeah. that are on loan from now, the Now, do you Air have any, any jets that are actually functional? Yes. The I, 39s We have... Uh, we have two uh, aircraft that are designated. Their designation is L-39. Mm -hmm. They're uh, Russian-designed, Czech, built in Czechoslovakia. Okay. And they're, um, one of them is uh, configured as a training aircraft. Mm -hmm. and the other one is configured as a what they call a light combat aircraft. It has a, a 23 millimeter cannon. The cannon's removed, but the gun, right. the gun pod is there. And... Uh, drop tanks, and we fly that routinely. We fly both of them routinely. Right. How do people get in touch with you? Well, they can send an email, very simply, to info at americanairpowermuseum.org, or they can call 631-293-6398, 631-293-6398. Uh, and do you take donations? Do you have a website to take donations? We take that? donations through PayPal. Okay. Um, and we have memberships that are available for people that come very often to the museum. Right. Let's, um, talk, let's talk about that. You have three, uh, four different types of memberships, right? Which we do. I didn't even know about until, and, you know, and I said I've been to the museum a number of times, so I know I'm going to be signing up for one of these memberships. But, well, we'd love to have you. Yes. And uh, we'll talk about these four here. We got four, right? Cadet, which is for kids, right? It's forty dollars a year, mm -hmm. and it gives them free unlimited admission for the full year for the first student, and it's the subscription to your newsletter. Correct. Right? In other words, we have a beautiful uh, magazine called Flight Lines, mm -hmm. which comes out once, sometimes twice a year, which is a beautiful magazine which they can get. And it gives us some great information. And then you have the wingman, which is for somebody like me. Uh, you know, I'm an individual. I love just because I, I, I'm just coming around and just walking around and just looking at everything. Uh, and I got to, you know what? I got to, uh, something just pop into my head that I actually learned at the museum that we'll, I want to talk about. Why'd you poke me? Because you're going to like it. <laughs> Free unlimited admission for one, for one adult for a year, subscription to the newsletter. Okay, and it includes entry to one air show weekend event for an adult. Right. Right, which I don't need because we already talked about when we have the weekend stuff, right. we're, you're, usually you're there there <laughs> yeah, we're usually there working. Yeah, we're working. You know, and then you have a flight lead, which is free unlimited admission for two adults and two children for a year. Okay, that's $175 a year. So think about that, right? If you have four people that you're coming in and they're two adults, two kids, you're, you're spending $44 just to come in at one time. Right. So you, really for four visits, now you can get as many visits as you want, come in there. Not only that, you know, you're eligible for, you know, member rates on the flight experiences, which exactly. are cheaper you get, rates. You get $50 off. Right, so you're get you so you're saving money even just doing that. So if you came once and you two or three, you went on, or four, you went on the, on the flight experience, you just saved your money right there. We, we encourage people who bring their children often to, mm -hmm. to join up. But again, you know, we're trying to set up um, a way to really track memberships. Um, and it's not an easy thing. You need a computer no. system. Yeah, I was ask you if you have any statistics yes. on well, how long people stay in the museum. Yeah. Usually they stay anywhere from 45 minutes to three hours. 
I mean, it's unbelievable. Now, we do have group visits. I'm a three-hour person. We, we, <laughs> we encourage, of course, we get um, Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts and school groups, mm-hmm. which we encourage, of course. Um, they get special rates uh, on, on the visit. The very important thing that I'd like to mention is that we are totally uh, run by volunteers. There is one full-time paid staff and a half uh, a staff person who's our chief pilot. So everybody else is a volunteer. So when you come and you're shown around, those are docents who are volunteers and what's donate neat, their time. Right. What's neat about it, and I know you know I've been going there for 20 plus years, is and it was I probably more so 20 years ago than it is today. But you actually have volunteers that actually either worked on the field, correct, or when it was when it was creating the P-47s and the other aircraft after that, because the A-10 was designed and built here. The uh, uh, the 105, right? F-105. F-105 was yeah, built and designed Chief. here, yes. right? The Thunder Chief. You know, so a lot of cool aircraft were actually created right here. Are you still looking for volunteers? We always, always look. We have we always. have about a cadre of about online for a volunteer. Correct. There's a form that you can fill out that's on the website. And what's that website address again? It's www.americanairpowermuseum.org. www.americanairpowermuseum.org. So as long as you remember that it's American Air Power right. Museum. You say they spend 45 minutes to upwards of three hours. Do you have a concession in there? Is it, is there like There's a, a gift shop. Crazy, they, gift shop, but is there a way to get a hot dog or something like that? Only on, on uh, oh. weekends where yeah. we have events. We have, yeah, they we, turn the jet engines on on the plane and they <laughs> stand behind barbecue. that. You can barbecue. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. We, we, do, we do sell freeze-dried ice cream in the gift shop with the kids love. <laughs> ask, ask for that ice cream. Nice but, and healthy. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We try to keep uh, healthy. But the gift shop is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kids enjoy going in there um, afterwards, of course. And that's a concession, by the How way. How do you get the planes? They People just donate them? Well, the, no, donate? I wish. Well, <laughs> um, the museum itself... I, I, I started with fly. I started flying a uh, back in the seventies a uh, a World War Two training biplane, mm-hmm. and then uh, got a rebuilt uh, AT six trainer, which was the the basic fighter trainer for World War Two. And then after that, um, uh, I rebuilt or had rebuilt a P fifty one Mustang and. Um, so a lot of the aircraft are on loan to the museum, uh, and the museum itself has its own, like the C-47 is a museum aircraft, um, as are uh, one of the training aircraft mm-hmm. and um, some of the other, some of the other uh, uh, airplanes we have. And others are owned uh, and on loan uh, from myself. Um, over the years, originally we were in, based in down in the middle of New Jersey, and we flew air shows. I, right. uh, I'm rated in basically all the aircraft in, that we have in the museum. Okay. Um, one of well, I'm not. I take that back. I'm rated in all but the C-47. So we have a B-25 Mitchell bomber, mm-hmm. which is a twin-engine bomber that actually flew off an aircraft carrier, 16 of them, and did the first raid on Japan right. in the World Doolittle War II, the Doolittle Raid, raid yeah. April 18th, 1942, which mm-hmm. was, um, when you think about that, the aircraft we have was the first of its of its kind, first B-25 um, accepted by the Air, Army Air Corps before mm-hmm. uh, World War II in February 1941. And... Um, uh, ultimately became the uh, personal aircraft of the commanding general of the Army Air Forces, General Hap Arnold. Right. So it's a pretty historic piece of equipment. And um, that was a restoration project. We found it derelict at an airport in Texas. And I had some friends in California. So this that, is that, actually Hap Arnold's yes, aircraft. it's actually Hap Arnold. It even has a bed. Oh, yeah, it's, it really <laughs> yeah. What they did was they lowered, they cut down the bomb bay, the right. original uh, where the bombs were, 
and they lowered it and made it into a kind of a, a bed, and then there's a desk and, and oh, really? telephone sleeping okay. area. And you get to see all this. And, that is uh, awesome. yeah. So that airplane flies uh, routinely. And okay. um, so we found that airplane, and uh, I got some uh, buddies of mine uh, from California who did restorations to come mm -hmm. over to Texas. And it was all on a volunteer basis. Right. And um, the wings were stacked against it. The outer wing panels were stacked against the airplane. The airplane was sitting there, uh, bolted everything together. Mm -hmm. um, the airplane hadn't flown in I don't know how long. We got a ferry, got the proper ferry permits and everything. Right. Um, put gas in the tanks, cranked up the engines. They just you know put batteries right. in it, it, lit it up, and, and it started right up. And headed west to California, where the restoration of that airplane took place. Restoration meaning. That we went through it completely yeah. from head to took toe. it apart. Yeah, sure exactly. Took right. it apart and put it back together again. But to answer your question, so, we're so, always looking yeah. for for yeah. donated yeah. aircraft, yeah. Right. which is a right. you know it's it's yeah. everything's a challenge when yeah. you run a nonprofit. You know, yes. you need no, you need I'm, to. I've been doing that for not running a nonprofit, but working with nonprofit <laughs> for thirty one <laughs> it's, years. It's there crazy. Was, I ask a question about a little bit on your personal side in regards to your business. Are you wearing one of the jackets that you sell? Yes, I am. All right, so if I wanted to buy one, if anyone wanted to buy one, does it come with patches? Because I see that's the only yeah, thing that's it Well, it, it can come with insignias, various patches. It's all authentically historic. Um, it's beautiful. And it, uh, it's based, this jacket is a replica of uh, a, a World War II uh, Army Air Force pilot, or uh, air crew jacket, mm -hmm. pilot jacket. Uh, we do uh, jackets, we produce jackets for the Navy, for the uh, U.S. Air Force. Uh, we do repli basically replicas of the more vintage type jackets mm -hmm. with, if you want to call them patches or insignias, uh, even paintings on the back uh, <laughs> simulating the, the nose art of airplanes. That's a whole nother, that, that's a whole nother esoteric uh, subject as to during world, especially during World War II, it sort of started when uh, pilots uh, or commanders, air crew commanders, on the started on the bombers mostly, and then went on to the uh, fighters. But um, they would put uh, pictures of pinups or mm -hmm. girlfriends or name the plane and right. whatever. And a lot of times you, you, you would find, whether it was part of the ground crew or the air crew, there would be in a bomb group or a squadron or a fighter group or, or a fighter squadron, there would be an actual, uh, somebody who had been a commercial artist um, in civilian life before right. they were in the, uh, in the military. Uh, and uh, they uh, created a lot of this, this art. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was by the, the people. And that's kind of what the museum is about, the people. The museum is intended to convey the. Well, you, you the, tell the, the stories. The, right? We tell the stories of the people that, that were here, that were working, that, that, were, that, were, that, were, that both built the airplanes and flew them mm -hmm. against it, inc odds that you, you couldn't even imagine today. Right. Uh, they, well, they were, what's, what's neat about it, too, and, you know, the museum, when you go into the museum, there's a, there's a, a, a model in there. Of what, you know, Republic Airport looked like yes. in its heyday. Oh, okay. And That's, when you look at it, you go, "Oh my God!" Because now there's a mall, and you know, it's like right. all these this stores, and the, 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 the one field thing is gone. that I started to talk about with the volunteers, and you mentioned the older volunteers originally um, helped build all of those um, dioramas mm -hmm. and. Uh, Various all, all exhibits, that, yeah. which you all know, it's of that very, is volunteer created, which right. is very internally creative. It's you know Jeff's been talking a lot about the airplanes, because of course that's part of his passion. And um, what's super interesting, and and I think the website is not giving that enough, is mm -hmm. that it's not only about the airplanes. There are tremendous exhibits. We have an incredible exhibit on the wasps we have yes, probably the um the women air service pilots in in world war ii yeah to, the, to those of you who know, there were there were hundreds of women that actually ferried these airplanes because most of the men that were flying were fighting off in the war well how'd the airplanes get there 
Correct. You know, and it was these women, it, they were wasps, who actually flew them, test flew them, Absolutely. made sure they were good. When they know. rolled them out the door, yeah. our, our museum is in the final assembly hangar of uh, Republic Aircraft Corporation. Uh, during World War II, when they rolled the P-47 Thunderbolt fighters out the door, mm -hmm. the, it was the women that flew them up to Bradley Field in Connecticut right. for training, for the, the men to start training on them, and then the planes were then flown to uh, ports and, and put on boats and shipped right. overseas. I know you get about 25,000 people a year right. that visit the museum. Are these New Yorkers? Or these people from around the country? They're interestingly. More, they're, no, it's about right. Um, they're a lot from Long Island, even though people still, when they come in, very often I'll say to them, How did you hear about the museum? Well, I've been coming by this place for years and didn't know it existed. You offer so, trips, you know, I'd say from Pennsylvania and New Jersey, busloads. Uh, where you can we don't. get people. We don't. That might be a good little idea. Yeah, absolutely. For you to There's do. a lot so of Norm, great Norm, ideas. Norm's always That's what I do. That's what my business is about. Well, then we need you as a volunteer. Uh, yeah, you do. So we're, you're, 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 you're welcome. You need him more than you need me. No, you know, but no. I can help you in certain areas. That'd be great. You, I'm just going to want to play with the airplanes. No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we need. We well, need. You, you know, we need help with the website. We mm -hmm. need help with. The, the guys that built the original exhibits have passed away, unfortunately. Yes. So we're constantly looking we have for, for... And I'm not saying it sarcastically, but or we know all these people. That'd be great. That can go and, and help you. Now, whether they do it voluntarily or they don't do it voluntarily, or they do it at a, a major reduced fee, well, so, that's, you know, that's, that's something that to be worked also. on. But sure. we have the contacts to go and help you. That'd be great. Yeah, I mean, definitely the website, you know, it, it, it needs updating. It does. You know, as, we, some as we know. As we, as we, we know, can't right? let the history disappear. Right. Well, that's why and, we keep plugging away at it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you asked a question about the, the business, which is, you know, our, our personal side, um, which is Cockpit USA. And that business and the museum um, both have a mission to educate. So many of our jackets tell a story. So the same way as the things that the museum tell a story. So they're very, of course, the... you got to get the jackets on the Internet. We, we are. We are. Our website is on, is on the Internet. And we're tell me about this lady. Well, here's, i got a question. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of our viewers, Sam from Sayasa, oh. wants to know <laughs> if we can get it in uh, double XL. But he m needs more like a triple XL. Well, we're probably XL. one of the few companies that um, offer jackets up to 5XL. Oh, okay, 5XL. 5XL. So, John, XL. we're covered. I mean, Sam, we're covered. <laughs> we're covered. for the next year or two. That's it, at least. Tell me about the lady B-17. Um, Yankee you're, lady. You're looking to yeah. raise some money to bring oh. the Yankee lady B-17. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Bring it back Again, to life. Bring it back. No, bring it to, to, to the... What kind of plane is it? A B-17. It's a B-17. Oh, okay. It's a bomber. It's a bomber. It, it, was, a, it, was, it was one of the two. Sorry, sorry no, we forget that you, you don't have the exactly. knowledge. Just, it, the knowledge. It, it was one it's of the so two much. mainstay uh, heavy bombers of the United States uh, Army Air Forces in World War II I, I, I that conducted the, the strategic bombing raids in Europe and over in, in Asia. Um, it, How much it, money do you need to get this plane here? About $15,000. Fifteen? Yeah. It comes in from Michigan, so okay. it's a lot of a lot of fuel. It's a lot of fuel to come in. <laughs> and and it participates it in the Jones Beach. When do you need it here, by? It comes in about, uh, actually, the Friday before the Jones Beach Air Show mm -hmm. in May. So it's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, it comes basically. in Memorial Day weekend. It's really, I mean, we And it gives really rides, by the way. It's really exciting for people. Now, who knows about people. the rides? Well, it'll be on our website soon, and uh, well, we're going to announce they, it. Yeah, and they promoted the, at the Jones Beach show that you can take rides on the beach. You better find one of these volunteers that work for you that's computer literate. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We certainly do. 
We need it right. Well, we, we have a computer some. literate volunteer. Well, I'm not a website <laughs> designer, but I know some website but designers. He, Maybe he I can does, get them to donate just, some time. It, it's, because it, it really it really shouldn't take too much to, to clean up your website. No, and, no, no, and there's it, some things we want to add to it, of yeah. course. Yeah. I, I think what it takes is constant attention. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not ma major at one time, it's constant you updating. Constant. Just no, you have to be careful to have the correct information up. <laughs> you have to well, that's, that's make sure. Thing. We found that out <laughs> because I pull some information from the website that's no longer relevant. Right. You know, and uh, you know, we caught that in the yeah. nick of time. By the way, we do, do, um, we do offer a space for children's parties, which are very, very Yes, I, I told you I attended. How many people can you put in there? Well, in, in the museum itself, uh, we've had weddings with 300 plus people. Um, yes, yeah, The kids' big. parties, there's we use the briefing room uh, area, and it's usually under 50 people. But Off, all, off air, you're going to want to talk to uh, Darren and myself. Great. <clears throat> Love to. Because there, there are ways that uh, we we can go and, and help you, and you're certainly worth helping. You got history, you got lives, you got history. Uh, well, you got dedicated people that don't want to see the. You know, I I just uh, last real. last May I just uh, buried one of my uncles that actually worked at the plant and actually retired from there in 19. He was in the army during World War. II. Two came home, got a job at Fairchild the Republic, and stayed there until he retired in, in the eighties. And uh, you know he just passed away last year. You know, and it, it's like the history is leaving us. No, it is. You it know? is. And, and the kids. Events coming up. Yes. And the reason why I'm asking is because you won't believe this. It's almost the hour. Oh wow! Yeah. It's oh my gosh. Crazy. It's crazy. It's. I told you the time just passes by. You were worried about not having enough information. But wait, I want to talk about the aircraft. I got a cool. I got a well, cool. You did you know? I got a. Did you know? Let's okay, let's put it. Did, did you know? know? Did you know? Can anybody out there tell us where the term "the whole nine yards" came from? Uh, Jeff's smiling, right? <laughs> so and Jackie's smiling because they know he doesn't know. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give everybody a couple of minutes. Where did the whole nine yards come from? I want to see some responses it came up from here. Football. No, it didn't come from football. Oh, okay. All right, people think it comes from football, but it's a very interesting story. And you know what? I learned it at the museum. This oh, was really? one of the things I yeah. Well, I right. was at the museum and a volunteer was walking around with us, and we were looking at the different aircraft. And he explained where that term came from. Do you have any idea what I'm talking Wingspan. about? Wingspan. Nope. nope. Well, if Go you, ahead, Jack. If you take a look at the um, the P-51 Mustang, mm -hmm. which we have flying a flying aircraft, uh, and you open up the gun bay and the ammunition bay, uh, which is a slotted area in the wing where the belting, uh, belted 50 caliber ammunition was layered in so that it would feed into the six fifty caliber guns, three in each wing. The length of, the complete length of all the belted ammunition that was layered into that wing was nine yards. So you had nine yards, <laughs> nine yards uh, in each wing of belted fifty caliber ammunition, fifty caliber bullets, um, that were set up so that they could feed each of the mm -hmm. three fifty uh, caliber uh, machine guns. Did you win guns any trivia contest with that bit of knowledge? No, but I have a, I have a cornucopia a... of trivia. That, yes. That yes. Is beyond <laughs> aircraft, but it's okay. <laughs> but it, you know, it, no. when I and learned you know, that, I was like, I'm "Wow!" Sorry. And and it was if the pilots came back without any ammunition ammunition left, they you, would say, "You shot them." I gave them the whole, whole nine, nine yards. yards. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to, I'm going to make it because we have to get towards the end of the show. Mm -hmm. we got to get you to mention your events. I'm doing a concert next week. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a Donna Summer tribute show. Oh. I'm going to take, for everyone who buys a ticket tonight, uh, not tonight, but calls me now, between now and showtime, I will take a portion of that ticket and I will donate it to your your museum. Oh, wow. wow, thank you very How's much. That? But they got they have to mention your museum to me so I know what, what's coming. Mention the business power hour, okay, and that you are watching us this week and you know you're gonna be donating money to a good cause. You and don't have, have a to, wonderful time. A two right. hour or so show, concert, 
you know, right here in the, in Long Island and Suffolk County. And you Suffolk get County. to meet Norm. And you get to see me in my crazy jackets it's on stage. <laughs> wow. Well, we need to get yes, you a, a flight jacket. Yes, absolutely. That we would got, be we gotta get we gotta get Norm a flight jacket. And, you know. And we need. I mean, you probably saw the the PBY. That's another uh, big event talking about events mm-hmm. that we're trying to get flying against. What is that? Well, it's a, P- a PBY is an amphibian. It's a PBY yeah. Catalina. It's which was cool. the it's that uh, huge blue uh, thing that it's, it's, awesome. it's in parts. It, it well, was, that, that's one of the planes that Civil Air Patrol used quite a bit during World War II. Right. For right. those of you who don't know, Civil Air Patrol, uh, December first, nineteen forty-one, became official, and right. uh, you know we flew we you, flew uh, submarine patrols. Used to fly anti-submarine coastal mm-hmm. patrols and yep. Grumman amphibians yep. and Catalinas. Yep. And uh, this. This aircraft is a project, a restoration project. We flew it in, but mm-hmm. we found some things that needed fixing, major right. things. Okay. So the so airplane. So it's in parts right now. Well, the airplane, the, the fuselage, the body of the airplane is not. <laughs> right. But the wings are off it, and the okay. center section is being rebuilt, and it's a monumental project mm-hmm. because it has to be rebuilt from scratch. Yeah. Literally recreated. Because you can't just get parts for these. Not only parts, but you them. don't have the tools. They had right. to. They had so to, we have to retool the tools. We have to make the go. tooling to actually build the right. the airplanes, yeah. and even taking care of them, maintaining the a, a Mustang, or we have a, a aircraft called a, a P forty, which was actually the they were the first aircraft that right. took off from when the Pearl Harbor attack took mm-hmm. place. Yep. And actually uh, they're the ones with the shark teeth. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then they were flown by the American volunteer group in China. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they're the one the, the, flying, fa- tiger. the flying tiger. Mm-hmm. They have the flying tiger, the reputation of the flying tigers. Right. They have the shark teeth in the front. And uh, all of our what's interesting is all of our aircraft have some kind of provenance in terms of the people that flew them, the people that were in them, and what they did, where they were, and the p- kinds of history that they participated in, all the way up through almost in a contemporary way, even today. Mm-hmm. Uh, the C-47, going back to the C-47 that we got, uh, it has a really interesting story. After World War II, it came out of the uh, Army Air Force, went to the British, Air Force. Mm-hmm. They went to the Swedish Air Force and finally ended up in the Israeli Air Force, believe it or not. Uh, and the mid 50s dropped paratroopers. Again, it was never a civilian cargo aircraft. Right. So it dropped paratroopers, I think, in somewhere in, in the Middle East, in the Suez Canal, in 1950s, mid 50s. Oh, wow, okay. The mid 50s. And then in the, all the various conflicts. Up through the, the aircraft was operational up through the late 90s. Wow. And then it was cocooned along with a dozen of its mm-hmm. sister ships uh, somewhere out in the desert over there. And a, uh, uh, an outfit in Canada, the, the history of the plane is the outfit in Canada bought uh, the whole lot of the, uh, the dozen of these C-47s. And they right. were the, the last of the last of the originals really original ones that were never chopped up as as cargo planes or used as passenger planes. And um, uh, set up uh, lines of of 55-gallon gasoline drums inside the airplane Mm -hmm. and ferried them from uh, someplace wherever they were in Israel to uh, England and then to Ireland and then to, I think... uh, Canada. Newfoundland. Right. And uh, then from Newfoundland... All the way to the middle of Canada, in an Alberta or near Winnipeg, somewhere like in the middle of wheat fields, no, right? And nowhere. Whatever. And uh, we got wind of this and uh, hot footed it up to the middle in November, which is oh, so up, like, up there. You got two feet of snow on the ground. Well, uh, they get snow on the ground in October, right. but <laughs> so they had the, everything on the ground, you know, that you could think of ice, snow, whatever. And uh, we actually had the pick of the litter in terms of the the aircraft. And um, uh, the parts, the engines, the propellers, right. and and the the fact that they were always military maintained is you, see, you can see that in the airplane that it, that it's so it's still well maintained. It was still right. it was, it's so, a pretty so when good people shape. come in and sit down and and go up in the airplane, it's original. They number one, it's original. Number two, it's a comfortable feeling mm-hmm. to know that the airplane has been 
taken care of right. by the people that act, the people that actually were trained to service them mm-hmm. to service them and uh, make sure that they if they went on a mission that they came back. Right. They, Number they, three, we're gonna have you have to have you come back again because yeah. it's reached that witching hour. So <laughs> okay, right. we're, we're way over. I'm Tell sorry. I think we went one more time. Far. How, how do how people do get in touch with you guys? So okay. they can call six three one. 293-6398 or easier info at americanairpowermuseum.org All right, thank you. I, Any events? Thank you, thank you. Anything else you want to say before we... Uh, no, the, the, the events are going to be announced on the website uh, starting in April. All right, fantastic. For the, for the, for the D-Day, the for the 75th anniversary. Out there yeah. So people get to know whom and what you're, you're all about and uh, bring some funds into, into your museum. Well, we'd like to thank you both very much. We oh, it was our pleasure. It was definitely our pleasure. Yeah, I was. (laughs) I'm all excited. I want to do the whole. His hair got thicker. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you guys. We really appreciate it. We give you. What's going on for you this week? Anything coming up? Uh, Nothing coming up next week. I can think of coming up. I got to look at my schedule. You want to? You want to wait a second? No, I don't. I don't have any speaking engagements coming up or anything like that. We just have the Donna show coming up next Friday night. Uh, at uh, uh, CM Performing Arts Center in Oakdale. So hopefully everybody can... Uh, and anybody who buys a ticket and mentions that you bought it because you saw the show here, just remember, he's going to donate will... some of that money back to these great Absolutely. people. Absolutely. So hopefully Thank you. we'll be able to get you a couple of bucks. Thank you so yeah. much. We appreciate yeah. it. Literally, Literally no one home home safely. Too. I know you so. have <laughs> Thank you. Unless you want to We're, fly. Well, we, well, we have nowhere do to we, land. <laughs> do we get, Donna be, do we get anybody voting on our stuff, Jim? Did I you see anything? Nobody we, cares. We, have, we gotta look. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. We'll have to. Cares. We'll have to so we'll have to, I'll have to put it up on Facebook. Do a poll yeah. on Facebook. So look for the poll, guys. We're gonna be putting up our tagline polls. Uh, are we again, allowed to vote? Are you are allowed, allowed to vote. vote. So again, we'll, we'll ask you guys right on the air. Now I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but. Plugging you into a world of new business opportunities. No, possibilities. You read it wrong. <laughs> no, it says possibilities. It doesn't say possibilities. It does. Look right there. It says possibilities. It says opportunities. All right, now read the other one. Creating new business one story at a time. I love the second one. You love the second one. There we go. I can't, Jackie, I can't Jackie loves the second one. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? How about you, Jeff? I, I think that really says it all. There you go. Yeah. It says it all, right? You're all, you're all well, right. It, it applies to us. It yeah. applies to everybody. Okay. You know, everybody everybody, everybody does have a story. Yeah. So, so thanks, every, thanks for everybody for tuning in tonight. Stories. I know we went a little long, but That's you know right. what? It's it, worth was it. Well, it was definitely was well worth it. Absolutely. Definitely was well worth it. We right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Great Have job. a good night, everybody. Great job. Today's show was brought to you by Friend Entertainment USA, producing the best concerts for charities and corporations for over 30 years. CBMS Consulting Services, turning vision into value. And CBMS Bookkeeping Services, control your business before it controls you. In association with Village Connection Network, your full-service marketing and media company. If you're interested in being a guest on our show, visit our website at www.bphdmm.com for more information.
soul is something I've always wanted to know. There's no sense of security. This is about freedom you kept for me. The sound of all your loaded gun. This outbreak war has just begun. The sound of all your loaded gun. This broken man has already won. Oh, my mind clears. Oh, I shed all my tears. Just wait.